Hello and welcome to a quick guide on bars rule, which is a really neat technique that you can use and apply to calculate end games like this one right here really, really quickly. Now, before I teach you this really cool bars rule, let's first understand why it's important in a position like this it's possible to just calculate this out and understand if white can win or if it's gonna be a draw. Now, by the way, the reason that this could be a win or a draw is you're never gonna really promote this pawn. You're going to sacrifice this pawn, run your king down, and it's depending on whether white is quick enough to promote this or if black can catch up and in the end get a situation where they kind of block out, blockade the opposing king and it's a draw. Now, you can certainly try to calculate this out, but this definitely leaves quite a bit of room for error, and it's not the easiest or quickest thing to do. And so, bars rule is a nice way to very easily and very quickly understand what's going on, can white win, or is this objectively drawn? The way that it works is as following. There's three conditions that need to be met. First of all, there has to be a rook pawn, which does not exceed the fifth rank. If this pawn was already on the fifth or sixth or seventh rank, this is a win. The only cases where it could be a draw, the interesting cases where bars rule is useful to understand is the fourth rank. So that's the first condition. The second condition is that the pawn and the king are adjacent right next to each other. And the third condition is that the opposing king is either right above the king or right above the pawn. Now, if these three conditions are met, then you can go ahead and apply bar's rule. You take the black pawn or the weaker side pawn, you draw a diagonal backwards, and you essentially hit the bishop's file. This might seem a little complicated, but you're going to see when we apply this, you're going to get used to it really quickly. So you take this pawn, you draw the diagonal, you kind of see where it intersects with the bishop's file. So it's clearly in this case, the square on c7. And then you draw kind of a right angle the other way, basically, you draw a line the other direction. If the pawn is above that line, that means that white is essentially not able to win. If the pawn is on that line, so for example, if the pawn was on h2 and all of these kings were moved down, this would have been actually a winning position for white. So we're going to look at many, many examples in this video of kind of the different variations of this rule. But let's first focus on this one right here. So as the rule mentioned, this pawn well above the line, this is a draw. Now the way that black draws, as I hinted upon earlier, is they take the pawn and then rush back to the other side of the board. And here you can see the importance of where this pawn is. If the pawn was on h2, black would not have been able to in time go all the way back up. But because the pawn is already quite up the board, black is very quick not to head only horizontal, but importantly to kind of go diagonally back. And this means that black can get to the very important c8 square and defend this pawn. Um, if you push, then after king b8, this is a very clear draw. And if you go king to a7, blocking king to b8, this is kind of the key idea, king to c7. And you block the king. Uh, if the king tries to wrap around, you're obviously happy to go to a8. If the king comes here, you continue to block the king. And I mean, you can kind of explore these positions a little bit more on your own, but this is a very well-known, very easy to understand draw. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move both of these pieces along with this king over here down two files. Now, what this does is that now when we draw these two lines over here, remember intersecting with the bishop's diagonal and then kind of switching the angle towards the other line, the pawn is no longer above that line, it is on that line. And therefore, this is actually winning. And the idea shouldn't be that foreign. The king is going to try the same thing that I just showed. But because the pawn is so down the board, the king doesn't have the time to go all the way up. And you can kind of see this illustrated right here, the king can come as far as d6 but no farther than that because we're not letting it come to c7 and the pawn is simply going to run up the board. Now, I do want to highlight one other important thing here. The king, it doesn't matter if it's on g4 in this position or h4 as long as it's above uh, either the pawn or the king. So if we kind of triangulate here, for example, king h1, and we switch the position and now it's black to move and the king is on h4 and the same situation arises you use bars rule you realize this is winning and indeed it's winning it doesn't really matter if the king is on g4 or h4 because these lines will actually just transpose 
Let's now move on to an exercise here with the white side. What do you play? So pause the video if you need some more time. What should you play here with the white side? The correct move is a4 because you recognize that after black goes a5, which is kind of forced because again, the farther up this pawn goes, the easier it is for white to promote because when you give away this pawn, you run up, your king is already in a very good position to block aid this opposing king that is trying to come as quickly to the corner. You're already kind of in that corner, so the king won't be able to kind of wrap around. And so a4, the best option, the best try is a5, but it's very easy to also dismiss this one because of bar's rule, you realize the pawn is not above the line, it is on the line. Similarly, if it was on g2 and the king was on uh, f2 and f4, this would also be winning because it's below or on the line and therefore this is winning. Um, and again, the technique to win this is very simple. One huge mistake that players would make in a position like this is they just start to push kind of aimlessly going up the board trying to make progress, but you've actually just ruined all of your chances because now if you draw that same line, by choice, you've made the pawn go one file up and this is a draw. So this is kind of, I think, one of the, the coolest applications of this. You don't wanna just randomly push your pawns, especially in a position like this. You wanna leave the pawn where it is and instead use your king. Uh, also note that if the king tries to like stop you from coming towards this pawn, then you can continue distracting the king but eventually pushing this pawn is the right option because now your king has kind of made progress. So it's okay that the pawn is a little bit further up the, up the board, if that makes sense, because you've regained that tempo by virtue of your king being far closer to this A pawn. Let's now move on to the fourth and final example. And this one is actually black to move here. What do you play? It should come to mind very quickly. The move is of course A5. You can you, you very quickly use bar's rule to identify the pawn is above this line over here, and therefore it is a drawn position. So a variety of applications, both with the white side and with the black side, I think that it's a nice and neat trick that you can apply into your own games. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe. If you're new around here, like this video. If you learned something new from it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.